here we find ourselves in section 3.6. And so um, 3.6 is using truth tables to analyze arguments and determine whether they're valid or not. And so I have six homework questions for you in the homework assignment for this section, all of which are using truth tables in order to uh, evaluate an argument. And so I wanted to show you how that's done by looking at a few examples with you. I might split them into two videos, depending upon how long the videos get to be. And so um, I wanted to have an argument first presented in words, right? The tank is empty, then I must fill it. The tank is empty, I must fill it, right? So this would be able to be evaluated by both um, an Euler diagram and a truth table. So I wanted to take this simple example to have you see how it's analyzed in a truth table. So we're going to give some things symbols. And... Um, and then basically all the homework problems and every example I do afterwards from now on is going to involve some symbols in there, and maybe with the exception of our next example. So as I go through this, let's go and construct a, a truth table that would represent this. So um, let me get in here and say, okay, let's let P be the tank is empty. So in the homework, you won't have to do this. I just use symbols. Q is, I, I must fill it. And so what we have is premise one, which is the first line. So they'll call that premise one. I'll write that out here when they do it in words. Premise one is that P implies Q. Premise two is the tank is empty. So premise two is P. And the conclusion in this argument is Q. And so what we want to show is that if we have P implies Q, and then also, so I'm going to use the and symbol, and then also P, that those two together would imply Q. That's what it's going to be our, our big... Um, argument, right? So the two uh, premises are going to be above the line. And what's underneath the line is the conclusion. And so you want to show that the two premises together imply the conclusion. And I think we already know that this is going to be true, but I want you to see what it looks like in a truth table. So this is actually, if I scroll everything up, this is actually where the homework is going to start us at, um, with the exception of they'll have the premises described in there. But uh, you're going to set it up with two tables. So here's P and Q. And if you read through the book, they're going to have some fancy names for things. So we're going to just set up a normal truth table. So true, true, false, false. Q is true, false, true, false. Right, just to get them all in there. And then we're going to go through the argument. So the first thing that we want to get is this P implies Q. So actually, let me utilize the fact that I have um, the ability to, to quickly change colors. So here's my P implies Q. So that's the first thing that we're going to find is the P implies Q guy. And as we do that, true implies true is true. True implies false is the only time it's false. And then we get a true true from the previous sections. Now we want to get the whole, um, two premises together, see if they can happen at the same time. So I'll do that in red. So now I'm doing this whole argument right here. So I'm looking at P implies Q together with P, right, using an and statement. So let me build out my grid line a little bit more. And so this is what you're going to be doing in the homework. You're going to be building these things. And so if I do P implies Q and P, true, true is true. If anyone is um, false, it's false. So true false is false. False true is false. False true is false. So hopefully you see what I'm doing. For, for the last one, I looked at the false here and I looked at the true here. For the one before that, false true, true false. All those are false. The only one that's true is this top one where they're both true. Remember, and needs them both to be true. So I'm going to back out some of those lines there. 
so that they're not clouding our view for the future. So we're, we have the end argument to make. So let me go back to black. And the end argument is putting all of this together. So I'll put that in green. It's the whole, whoops, not sure why that did that. It's this whole argument here. So what is that? I now want to see ultimately what does it look like with P implies Q together with P implying Q. So as we do that, I'm looking at the this true one here implying true. So true implies true. Yes, that's true. False implies false. Yes, anytime the um, antecedent is false, we got a true statement. False implies true. That's, that's, oh, I wrote false. <laughs> I apologize. I wrote what I was saying at the time. So let me come in here and erase that and come back. False implies false is a true statement. False implies true is a true statement. False implies false is a true statement. So no matter what, we get a true statement. When all of the conclusion elements are true, this implies that it's a valid argument. So we would mark, and, and simply your homework is marking whether it's valid or invalid. Um, and same with the test questions that come from 3.6, very similar to the homework. So this would be a valid argument, and we would mark the valid box. Why is it valid? Because the truth table, when I looked at the last implication, it was a valid implication. If we look at um, the way the homework is going to be structured, we're going to have a situation like this. So this is the structure of the homework. Um, so this will be my example two. Okay, so as we go to example two, the question is stated like this. P and not Q. Q implies, and they'll put these three dots, which mean therefore, Therefore, not P is their notation that they're using in the um, homework area. So essentially, we have the same thing. We're just uh, putting it in symbolic form right away. So, right, it's trying to save you some steps. So we need to show that we need to, well, we need to look at the truth values. For ultimately... P implies not Q, I'm sorry, no, I said implies P and not Q, and Q, that those two together imply not P, right? We want to look at those truth values, and if they're all true, like they were here, we'll call it a valid argument. If any one of them is false, it's an invalid argument. So we don't need them all to be false to be invalid. We just need a scenario to pop up that would be invalid. So how are we going to do this? Pretty much the same way we did the last one. You're going to have your true table. So have P and Q. And let me go up a little bit. And we know that's true, true, false, false. And then Q alternates true, false, true, false. Now, I'm going to first do the P and not Q. So I'm going to try to truncate things, and hopefully this will be able to be followed. As I do the P and not Q, I need that first part of the argument, right? I need this guy. Let me put it in blue again. I need this guy right here. So P and not Q. So let's remember what not Q would be. Not Q would be false, true, false, true. So I'm going to put that in blue because that's going to help me out for just a minute. And so P and not Q. If any one of them is false, the whole thing is false. So the first one's false because Q is false. Uh, not Q is false. Apologize. Uh, the next one's true because both P and not Q are true. The next one is false and the last one is false. So we have false, true, false, false. So I'm come in here and get rid of these helpers in there. So now I'm going to look at um, the next argument which would be this bigger one here. I want to look at P and not Q, which I now have the truth numbers for, or values, I guess they're not numbers, and Q. And we're going to build that guy. And it's just a very patient process. That's why I'm only having you look at six, and there's not an overwhelming amount on the exam. So as we look at, I'm basically taking the and of the two next to each other. So... The first one has a false involved, right? So I'm looking at these two, and they have a false involved. Then as I look at the next two, 
they have a false involved. The next two have a false involved. And the last two have a false involved. So everybody's false there. But remember, that's not my final argument. I need to then show the, that the implication is valid. And so let me come in here and make this bigger area because now what we need to do is the whole argument, which is, um, apologize I have, for the hesitation there. If I look in the green, it's going to be P and not Q. And Q, does that really imply not P? Is that a true statement every time? Well, let's look. Now, I'm going to help myself out and put some not P's in there. I'm going to put false, false, true, true. Well, take a look. Your antecedent, what's before the P and a not Q and Q is false every time. Well, we know that if the antecedent is false, then the implication is always true regardless of what's over here in the in the green not p area right so i quickly did not p but i didn't even need to do that because all my antecedents right these are my antecedents the first part about them are not being met therefore everything's true and we get a we get a valid argument out of this let me get rid of this green and what this implies is that we have a valid argument because all of the truth guys are lining up as true. Let's look at at least one more example together here. Um, for this one, we'll go in a second um, question. So this would be example three. Now I grab these examples, these ones I'm doing out of the homework. So this one says not P implies not Q. Q is the second um, premise and therefore not P. Okay, so we'll just test this out. So how do we do that? We build a big truth table, PQ. Now I'm gonna, just for ease, there's so many knots going on, I'm gonna make a not P and a not Q column. So remember, P is gonna be true, true, false, false. If we were to get them all, true, false, true, false for Q. Not P then would be false, false, true, true. And not Q would be false, true, false, true. Okay, just making uh, the opposites of each one of those. So let's go handle the very first. Actually, let me get a line out here. Let's go handle the very first premise. Not P implies not Q. Well, let's go not P. So not P implies not Q. So I'm just going like this. So there's the first one um, is true because anytime you have a false premise, it's going to, a false antecedent, it's going to be true. Same, second one, the third one is the false one. And the fourth one is true because true implies true is true. So I'm going to get rid of these um, red arrows that I put in here. And now we're going to um, look at the next thing. And the next thing is to take the two premises together. So it's going to be, let me come over here. Let me first put in black and then go to green. Actually, let me go to blue. That's this guy right here together. So this is going to be not P implies not Q, which I have the truth values for and we want to know and mixed together with q and so we're going to do an and statement so we're going to be looking at these guys right here together with q so that's my focus true and true is true true and false is false false and true is false true and false is false so just like we would have expected lots of false when we have an and, because we don't always have a lot of true statements, we should have somewhat of a balance in there. Well, we're almost done. We have this last piece in here. And the last piece is to look at the whole argument together. And that is 
did this not P implies not Q together with Q, did that imply not P? So we saw the implication work in the previous example. Let's see what happens here. Um, we'll stay in the green. Um, so actually, let me go to my eraser and get rid of these blue lines here. I forgot about those. So I come back to the green. So I want to know, does this guy imply not P? So true implies false. Oh, that's false. So right away, if I can actually stop there, I know I have an invalid argument because I ended up with the false, but I'm going to continue. False implies false is true. False implies true is true. False implies true is true. We fail. This is not a valid argument. Because of that false guy right there. So that's how you're going to tell whether something's not a valid argument is by getting a false conclusion. They don't all have to be false. The only way to get a valid argument is to have them all be true. But if at least one of them is false, it is a false argument. Right? And so you're going to look at just different examples like that as you go through the homework. So let these three examples um, be your guide as you go through it. The structure of the homework questions are these symbolic things. Um, I believe this is representative of them all. And so they could, they could have two implication statements, but essentially you're setting up these little truth tables with each one of the premises and, um, and then the, uh, the, two imp the two premises together, right? Always an and statement here. Does that really imply the conclusion? So, all right. Hopefully that goes well. Reach out to me with questions or concerns as you have them. Thanks for working through all these truth tables. It's definitely expanding our ability to, to think rationally through problems.